Hi, PsyQ community. I'm Dr. Miranda Fisher, medical science liaison for Otsuka Pharmaceutical, and I am happy to be here today with Ms. Laura Caponer. Laura is a certified peer support specialist, a mental health advocate, and a social media blogger, and she is taking part in an eight-part podcast series that we have in the patient and caregiver section, where we really get to listen to her perspective on a lot of mental health-related topics. So thank you again, Laura, so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So today the discussion is going to be revolved around self-stigma and how that might impact a person's recovery. Um, so to go ahead and start off, what does self-stigma look like to you and what are the signs that it may be limiting your recovery process? Something that's really tough for myself and my peers is when we need a higher level of care. And when we have to go inpatient, or even when we have to see a therapist, it's like there's this personal failing. We've done something wrong. We're not good enough that we can handle and fix things on our own. The way I look at it is if I broke my leg, I could try to hobble around on my own. I wouldn't get very far and I would make it worse. So I need x-rays to determine the problem. I would need a cast and I would probably need crutches to get myself around and I'd have to adjust to some of my daily activities so that I didn't make my injury worse and kind of feeling ways to adapt. With a mental health issue, it's the same thing. Sometimes we can better manage our symptoms and sometimes we can't. There's no shame in first and foremost seeking professional help to get those skill sets and to get that support that we can't give ourselves. And sometimes it's beyond what our friends and family can give us. And also, if we need a higher level of care, it's that crutches and cast. We need to do what we need to do to let ourselves heal. So self-stigma is about allowing ourselves grace in the recovery process and knowing it's okay to not be okay. Right. So do you have any tips or tricks um, to how this, how self-stigma can be addressed? It's hard. And personally, I think in recovery, it's going to be a daily process. There are times where I'm more forgiving and patient with myself. And then there are days where I'm not and I kind of beat myself up. Once again, I think it's about grace. It's about if you can connect with peers, that really helps so that you know you're not alone. And a lot of us face this. And just knowing that if you need a higher level of care, you need a higher level of care. And that's okay because that's how we get better. And I mean, the name of the game is recovery. We have to do what we can and we have to use the resources available to us to get better. So I think self stigma is about accepting what's going on and not denying ourselves the opportunity to get well. Yeah, I think that insight is great. Um, and thank you so much for, for sharing your perspective on it. Um, and we hope to have you back soon. And so before we finish up again, I'd just like to remind the audience, um, please check out the patient and caregiver section and keep a lookout for more podcasts with Laura. Thank you so much.